Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Jerry, uh, just bringing you a, a brief devotion today, just something to uh, kind of keep us focused on the Lord during this time of uh, quarantine or whatever uh, you're dealing with right now. We're going to try to do this about once a day uh, from the staff uh, each day. So um, anyway, today's my turn. So um, I'll be doing this a few times. So I wanted to uh, kind of focus uh, on uh, Psalm 23, 23rd Psalm. And uh, that's obviously a very familiar passage uh, for most people. Uh, it's easy to turn off our brains when we get to passages like this because we've read it, we've memorized it, we maybe even taught it before. Um, but the writer of Hebrews reminds us that the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and it never gets dull. Uh, we might lose interest, but the Word of God itself, the deeper we go, the more we learn about it, the sharper it becomes to uh, cut apart the, the difference between the thoughts and intentions of our lives. And in other words, it always has something for us, something fresh, uh, that will apply to our lives right now. And that's certainly the case uh, during this uh, event that we're living through. Um, so David, who wrote the 23rd Psalm, uh, was a great hero of faith. Uh, you know that. You know the story of David and Goliath taking on this nine-foot monstrosity of a man with a sling and a stone and knocking him silly and cutting his head off. Uh, and he did this only because he knew that his God was bigger than whatever Goliath was worshiping. Uh, he did it in completely in faith in Yahweh. And so, uh, but he was also a man like us. If you read his story, uh, the Bible doesn't pull any punches about David or anyone else in scripture. Uh, he was a man like us. He experienced betrayal, danger, loss. Uh, we can identify with him in, uh, in so many ways. David often had reasons to be afraid, uh, to feel insecure and anxious. But most of what we see and hear from David is, is really none of those things. Uh, and, and that's because of his view of God. Even if you remember, uh, one time David was quarantined. Uh, he was hiding from Saul in a cave. And he didn't have his best people with him. He had some of the dregs of society there to keep him company. And everyone was, you know, Debbie Downer and, and all of that. Uh, my Debbie is not a Debbie Downer. But anyway, um, but because of his view of God, he was able to keep his head and keep his faith, even in the midst of such a depressing situation. Um, and it's because he saw God, he saw the Lord, as his shepherd. And that's what he says in uh, verse 1 of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Now David was a person who really understood the awesomeness of God. The amazing power and, and unmatchable strength and uh, wisdom and all that. If you read Psalm 18, you see a God of great power. Uh, uh, working on behalf of David and us. Um, but here in, in this psalm, we see a, the, the other side of God being a shepherd. Okay, He's up close and personal. Uh, we see this personal dimension to our Lord. And when David needed comfort and reassurance, he went to his shepherd. So the question then becomes, where do you and I go for our comfort when we need reassurance? Where's the first place that you go? Uh, so I have to admit, sometimes for me, I go down in the family room and I turn on uh, the nearest uh, video of Murder, She Wrote, or Columbo, or or Monk, or some, some other classic television show. Um, but then I realize, you know, this is artificial. This is not really going to help me. It makes me feel fun. I, I, I enjoy it. But, you know, that's, that's uh, nothing more than a substitute, really. Uh, 
when we go for comfort and reassurance, um, we don't really have many options right now also because we're at home. Um, but uh, we still need um, comfort uh, for, you know, about our job, about our financial situation, about our family who may or may not be at risk. And staying home can be great, but it's also, it also could be very stressful, if we're honest. <laughs> it could be quite challenging. Um, so where do we go? How do we escape when there's nowhere to go? And David went to the Lord. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, who is the boss of everything. He's got it all in control. He's got it all in his hands. Uh, no one outranks him. No one overrules him. Uh, his desire and his uh, love for us will govern the universe. It will govern our lives because he is the Lord. There is no one like him, no one higher than him. And so David says, this Lord, he is my shepherd. Notice the personal uh, connection there. He's my shepherd, my individual shepherd. This Lord of the universe who can make stars appear with a single thought thinks about me and is focused on me and is there to care for me like a shepherd cares for his sheep one-on-one -on -one with, with great love and affection and, and attention. He's, God is very attentive. And so we can and do must much, I'm sorry, we, I'm reading here, um, we can and must do the same. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? We need to go to our shepherd because he is near us. He is inside of us if we follow Christ, if we belong to him. And David knew one thing about this shepherd that he says in verse 1, uh, that he takes care of everything. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. So he's saying that God is in charge and God cares for me deeply and God will make sure that I have everything I need. Other translations say there is nothing I shall want. Um, others say that uh, there is, there are, I, I have no needs apart from him, that kind of thing. Uh, that's, that's what David is communicating here. Um, he is, what the Bible says, is our portion. He is sufficient uh, to our every need. And so, um, if I am uh, feeling worried or uh, upset, if I think like David thinks here, I can be calmed. I can be, I can settle down. When I realize the Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. Uh, if I'm feeling afraid, I can have contentment. Why? Because God will provide what I need. If I don't have it, then I don't need it yet, and God God will get it for me. Uh, he'll provide it as only he can. And um, whether you're worried about, you know, losing your job or or not getting rehired if, you, if you've already been laid off, uh, you're worried about maybe, you know, I'll never get married or uh, maybe about, you know, my my uh, family member is sick and what's going to happen to them. Uh, all these concerns, all these worries are known by your shepherd. He knows them. He understands them. He knows what they're doing to you. And he is there uh, to help you, to provide for you. So David knew where to go. And um, whenever life started closing in on him, and it's the same place that we must go. And even though this psalm is not uh, what we call a messianic psalm, it doesn't refer to Jesus, the Savior, uh, Jesus himself in John 10 said, I am the good shepherd. So if you're wondering who Dave is talking about, it's me. Uh, if you look at John chapter 10, I want us to read that briefly. Verse t first 10 verses here. He says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. 
The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from a stranger because they don't know his voice. And this is where sheep uh, can be more intelligent than human beings because sometimes we follow false shepherds even though their voice is new. Verse 6, those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come in, they will come and go freely, and I will find and will find good pastures. Verse 10, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I think the New American Standard says, I've come that they might have life and that more abundantly, the abundant life. That's what Jesus wants for us. And even in the midst of a quarantine, even in the midst of having to be six feet apart from everybody, uh, Jesus wants us to have an abundant life. The important thing to realize when we're trying to cooperate with him to experience that life is to recognize that every false shepherd is a thief and a liar. Every false shepherd has come not to help you, but to kill you and destroy you. Now, they if we're talking about, you know, people that, that claim to be, you know, shepherds in some way, but aren't. Um, we can say that maybe they don't realize or not think directly, oh, I'm going to kill this person, but they are basically out for themselves. That's the key. They don't care what happens to the people that follow them. They care about what they get. They care about what the results are for their lives, for their pocketbook, for their reputation, and so on. They're not in it for anyone but themselves. And Jesus warns us against them. And he says, you know, my sheep know my voice. And it, the reason sheep knew the voice of the shepherd is because they heard it so often. And they were off with him alone. And when he talked, they, were, they listened and they, they knew his voice. So here's a simple test you can, you can make. If you're following a shepherd or you're getting your comfort and reassurance from somewhere, ask yourself, is this shepherd or is this whatever it is uh as i uh respond to this and and live within this do i need anything do i really have all that i need because with a false shepherd the answer will be no if if your false shepherd is money you'll never have enough if your false shepherd is uh, respect from others. You'll never have enough. If your false shepherd is peace in your family, there will never be a complete peace without Christ. And But with Christ, when he is your shepherd, you can deal with all of those things. You can, you can deal with, with the anxiety and tension that might be in your home right now. You can deal with the fact that your money supply is dwindling. Because you know that God is not going to let you be out begging for bread. His word tells us that. So all of these things God provides and he promises to provide. But if we go elsewhere for our comfort and our reassurance, there is no promise. In fact, it's pretty clear usually at some point that we're going to be left out to dry. So, but God is there for you one-on-one, 24-7, focused on your needs. He will see you through. Jesus has led us through the most dangerous thing of all, out of the swamp of sin in this life to a place of a rock of forgiveness and acceptance by God. And with Christ, as the Bible says, God will freely give us all things. So there is literally nothing we shall want because the Lord is our shepherd. So if you're feeling anxious and fearful, I encourage you to open your Bible to Psalm 23 and just read it slowly. Read verse one over and over and over until it seeks in the Lord. Who is the Lord? Who is he to you? 
is my shepherd. What does that mean? What does a shepherd do? There is nothing I shall want. Can you get that anywhere else? I don't think so. And then read John 10 again and see what the good shepherd has done for you. The whole chapter is filled with that. And thank him and tell him, say to him, I trust you. I trust you to lead me through this time, no matter what it looks like on the outside. I'll be praying for you. Thanks for listening. God bless.